Hi everyone, my name is Candy and I blog at stampwithcandy.com and I'm here to show you how to make this cute little project today. So hang on, let me switch over to this camera so that you can see it. Um, so I'm. Uh, this is a box to con that contains a card and let me show you the card. And the reason it's in a box is because it's too, um, it's too big for, <laughs> for an envelope. All right, so that's the front of the card. And here's the back of the card. So plenty of room to write a message to whoever you're sending it to. This is going, it's a birthday card for one of my really dear friends. And I know she'll love it. And I'll probably see it on her mantle for the next five years because that's what she, that's what she does with my cards. But anyway, um, when you open it, it opens like this. Let's see if you can see that. Isn't that pretty? And then when you look at the inside, you can see that the inside is um, it is very or a zigzag like that, Z fold, mountain valley, mountain valley kind of thing. And if as you look at it, you can see that um, it stands up, which is nice. Which is why the other reason will be on our mantle. And you've got plenty of room to show off some gorgeous DSP. And uh, you've got room for a sentiment. You could actually do two sentiments because these panels can be whatever you want. Now mine is not laying quite right because this was my first attempt at it after seeing it somewhere. And I thought, oh, I want to try that. Um, and then, you know, I, you, make, you make mistakes on the first one. But you won't have to make mistakes because I didn't watch the video. <laughs> I should have watched the video. <laughs> So anyway, this is what it looks like, and I used this this great set, stamp set that's uh, for Sab in the in the new uh, summer catalog, the summer Sab catalog that runs from July first to the end of August, and check or July second, sorry, to the end of August, and check this out. This is one of those distinctive stamps, and that's how you get this gorgeous variegation um, without uh, having to use multiple inks. Anyway, there are five stamps in the set, uh, a couple of flowers and a, um, I don't know, oh, that's an iris, an iris. I'm a gardener, I should know that's an iris, and a couple of leaves. Um, and also, I also used this sentiment from uh, the Season of Chic, which is one of my favorite sets from the new annual catalog. Wow, that's really kind of glary there, isn't it? Um, so anyway, I used um, Wishing You the Best Birthday Ever. And uh, I, part of the reason I picked that one is if, if it, I wanted a birthday sentiment, but it has to fit on one of these. Let me show you again. One of these panels, and they're not that big. Right, so I kind of had to play around and find a sen sentiment. But when I found that sentiment, I thought it was perfect. Now this looks complicated to make, and it's really not once you break it down correctly. But I also wanted to show you, so I showed you the stamp set, but now let me show you the DSP that comes with the stamp set. So during celebration, you usually get um, a, st a stamp set or some paper for each $50 purchase. But every time there's a couple that you get with a $100 purchase, and then there's others you get if you're hosting and it's a $300 party. So anyway, um, I just want you to see this paper. Now there's a little bit of glare because I keep my paper in a scrapbook, in the scrapbook holders. And the reason I do that is when I'm going to figure out what I wanna make, it's really easy to flip through and look at the paper. I found that when I ha kept them in the original packages, they got, you know, they got a little bit wrecked as you pull things in and out. And I found that when I put them um, in f on flat surfaces, I can't see them all. So I got to pull them out, put them back in. So yeah, there's a little overhead to putting them in, but in the long run, you, it's better for me anyway. And then uh, you can see both sides. One side is very definitely floral and one side is more of a graphic pattern. So um, look at these, they're just gorgeous. I have this one in upside down, oh well. Um, yeah, and oh, that's a pretty, that's pretty too. And then uh, this is another pattern, and then, I don't know, I kind of slipped through that pretty quickly. Can you see that pattern there? That's really pretty too. 
So, and then this is the next sheet, this is the next set. And the other thing I do is I print labels that have all the colors on it so that I don't have to go look up the colors. If I find something that catches my eye, I already know what colors work with it. So let me get that out of the way. And I think we will start with, we're gonna make, we're, I'm gonna show you how to make both the box and the card. And so I think we'll start with the card. But first, um, let me tell you, you need two full sheets. You need two sheets of um, the designer series paper, right? Because um, we need a sheet, these two pieces for the front and they're cut at um, four and five, four and seven eighths by five and seven eighths. Okay, so it's the same size, it's a one eighth smaller than the box it, itself, I mean, in the card itself. All right, so you need um, those. And actually, you need them for the box too. So, oh no, you only need one for the box. You need three of these actually, because you need one for the card one for the box and two for the card, two for the card. So um, hmm. I'm gonna have to cut another piece of these. Good thing the paper's right here. All right, and so those are at four and five eighths by five and seven eighths. Um, and so then for the card itself, you need two pieces. You need the inside one that holds the panels and um, you cut that at eight, eight by four eight inches by four inches. And you know, these measurements will all be part of the tutorial and eventually on my blog. Okay, and then we're gonna score this, but we'll get to the scoring later. Um, now, I chose to always use the flower side, but you could also use the other side when we get to the point of building the card. So you have to kind of decide. I liked their flowers. What's not to like about flowers? So I did the flowers first. So let's set those aside. Those are the first things we're gonna work on, I think. All right, then you need a bunch of uh, pieces of basic white, okay? So for the top of the box, you need one that's four by two and five eighths. For the front of the card, you need one that's four by two and three quarters. For the back of the card, you need one that's three and a half by five and four, the panels, you need um, four that are one and three quarter by two and three quarter, right? So those are the, the, the white pieces we need. And then we need mats for all of that, right? So the first thing we need are the panel mats. So you need four uh, by one and seven eighths. They're one and seven eighths by two and seven eighths. So all of these have what I call narrow margins, right? So in stamping, most of the time we have quarter inch mar markings, or uh, I mean, we have eighth inch um, borders or a 16th inch border. So if, we, if we're cutting with quarter inches, it's an eight, eight inch border. And if we're cutting with, um, if we're cutting for 16th, we leave an eighth of an inch free. All right, so those, go together. And I think actually we're gonna stamp first so I can get rid of a bunch of the pieces because otherwise this gets a little bit crazy. So anyway, we're gonna stamp first so these can all go together, okay? All right, and then we have the mat for the back piece, which is right here. And that's at three and five eighths by five and one eighth. And then we have the mat for the front which is four and an eighth by two and seven eighths. And then we have a mat for the box top, which is um, four and an eighth by two and three quarters. And then finally, we have the two pieces of the box. So I'm using, for my colors, uh, <clears throat> I'm using Mossy Meadow to stamp some leaves. I'm using a uh, rich razzleberry for some of the flowers and for the background. I'm using flirty flamingo and I'm using melon mambo. So that's our color scheme. Mossy meadow, rich razzleberry, flirty flamingo, melon mambo. 
and um, I pulled those right from the, the color of the flowers, right? Um, and I really had a debate about which of these I was going to use. Well, actually, either of the, any of these as the base. And today I was in a purple mood, so we went with uh, um, Rich Razzleberry. But, you know, again, you, I, you can do this with any set of DSP. Now, the one thing you have to watch for, though, is because how do I know I screwed it up the first time? <laughs> if you have something that's directional, in other words, it's not an all over pattern. Now this is an all over pattern, so it doesn't matter how I cut it, right? I don't have to worry about it. But when it's directional, you gotta get the direction right. So you have to think about the card being five by six, and so, so you need a piece that's 10 by six, or 12 by six rather, and you need to make sure that the, that the 12 goes across, not down, okay? So that was something that I kind of got messed up in the beginning, but not the end of the world. I had plenty of paper because it's free with a $100 order, so even if I used it all up on this project, I can put in an order and get some more. Okay, so... Um, Let's do our stamping. Now, I had intended to stamp some of this first, but um, I don't know. Don't know why I didn't, but I didn't. All right, so I'm going to stamp my um, greeting in Rich Razzleberry. And this should have a stamp and pierce mat under it because whenever you stamp with a with a photopolymer set, one of the clear ones, you need to um, have a, a, a mat under it really helps. Okay, and I always count a little bit to let the ink transfer, and that looks pretty good, except I got a little bit of a shadow on it, so we'll try that again. There we go. All right, let's get that over there so it can get a little clean. All right, so that's my Rich Razzleberry. I am going to stamp the flowers in um, Melon Mambo and Flirty Flamingo. So <clears throat> there are three sets of flowers and for the inside panels, the only one you can use, the only two that you can use are the iris and the, um, <clears throat> excuse me, the iris and the rose. So um, I'm gonna do the, I'm gonna do two of the rose and I'm gonna stamp those in Melon Mambo. And this doesn't need a stamp and pierce mat, so let's get that out of the way. All right, yes. Make sure you can see that that looks great now the thing about these stamps too is if your pad is too juicy they don't work very well and this pad is a little bit juicy because I re-inked it earlier but these came out okay but what you do then is you take your bone folder and you squish the ink to the sides by going like this and like this then there won't be ink right here you you ink up your stamp and then swoosh it back. So you can, there's a trick to that. Because you know, you're gonna say, how do you always have a, um, a dry pad or a dry enough pad? So those flowers came out just the way I expected. And now we're gonna do one more with the iris image. That came out really good. Look at that. And that's the flirty flamingo. All right. Okay, so then the next thing we're gonna do is we're just gonna glue them on their mats. And the reason I'm, I, I'm doing the stamping first is there's a lot of pieces here. And um, I'm afraid I'm gonna lose some of the pieces. So I kinda wanna get the, at least the, the images in their mats all together. All right, so I don't know if you've ever had trouble with this stamp and seal where it gets stuck. Now you can move it with your finger, but then I end up with junk on my finger and I hate that. 
So instead, what I do is I just roll it a little bit on my silicon mat, and then it starts working again. Okay, so, all right. So now I also have to tell you that I cut this wrong. I'm not sure if I cut this wrong or this wrong, so let me double check. So it's two and two and three quarters, and that is not two and three quarters. So I cut I cut the flower wrong. So let me fix that. Um, <coughs> forgot what I was gonna the tip I was gonna tell you. Um, so anyway, I I find if you rub it along the silicone mat, it's fine. And I do have to tell you that um, I have a, um, a bad eye. And so I take a really long time to line things up. And so um, most of the time I try and have that done before I start. But if I don't have it done before I start, um, then I'm going to, um, it's going to take me a while to line things up. And before I put the glue on the rest, I'll make sure it's the right size. All right, so trim that down a little bit and see if that's good. It's good enough. All right, um, let me make sure these are all the right size. Nope. Ew, this one's really off. All right, so I need it to be two and three quarter and I'm gonna take off a little bit from the bottom and a little bit from the top. Because this one was centered, the other ones weren't as centered. So, all right, there we go. And then let's see if this is right. No, but I'm gonna do the same trick here. I'm gonna take some off the bottom. Man, there's all kinds of junk in my cutter here, which is making me get bad cuts. And there's like a piece of glue stuck in there. I don't know what I was cutting. Oh well, I don't think it'll matter. We're not gonna do a lot more cutting. All right, so now I'm gonna do this one at two and three quarter. And it's all done and it's all good and we can move on. Okay, so I'm gonna put a little bit of the, uh, the stamp and seal on it. Um, now, the reason I'm using stamp and seal for this part, and I'll use liquid glue for other parts, is part of it is how much I wanna hold it, but the other is, will I wanna take it apart? Because I have this great product called Undo, and when you use Undo, you don't need to, um, you, it doesn't work well on the, um, on uh, the on um, glue, liquid glue, but it works great on snail. And uh, one of the concept artists at Stampin' Up showed me that trick um, on a video she was doing, and I was like, "Oh my God, I got to do this. This is just the the best thing." Because uh, as I said, I have this bad eye, so I have almost zero depth perception, and so for me, getting things lined up is really really hard. And usually it's really, really slow. And see, this one's a little crooked, but I'm gonna let it go. Um, it's really, really slow because I have to let the, the, the lazy eye, so to speak, adjust to what I want it to look at. And unfortunately, they should have caught it when I was a little kid and they didn't. And so now um, it would be very hard to fix. You've probably heard of kids that wear patches. I should have had a patch. And, but because I could read and I didn't get headaches, I didn't get, it didn't get caught. So now it would be uh, really painful to fix it because if to fix it, they'd have to, um, they have to do all this stuff and ugh, it just, it, it will give me really bad headaches and I don't want to do that. All right, so now let's stamp um, all of the other pieces that are going to use, that's the back and this is the other, the top. Let's stamp all of these um, pieces, which get me the, um, the front and the, the, uh, the front of the card and the, uh, 
in the uh, front of the box, the top of the box, I guess you would call it. All right, so I'm gonna use Rich Razzleberry for these flowers. Let's see how they come out. I just love this set. You'll probably, if you follow my blog at stampwithcandy.com, you'll see that I'm gonna use this set a ton of times because these flowers are so pretty. Wow, that came out great. I mean, just let me get this closer. Just look at the depth on those feel on those flowers. I don't know if you can see, but you know, there's dark and there's light and there's shading. And man, I could never do that with my blends. So anyway, I, I just really, really, really love these flowers. Probably jinx myself by uh, closing that too early. Sorry if my head's in there, but it's what I gotta do to be able to see. All right. I was gonna pre-stamp these and ran out of time because, you know, this is not really what you want to see on the video. What you really wanna see on the video is me, um, is how you construct the card, right? And, you know, there's all kinds of videos. There's those people who do it live and they wanna talk to everybody who's watching. And, and, then, and then there are people who love that, but then there are other people who just say, just show me what you're doing. And uh, I happen to be one of those second people. <laughs> just show me what you're doing. I don't really care. Okay. Um, I think I forgot two things, which is no big deal, really. Where's my silicone mat? Um, but I forgot the, um, the card base which is really silly, because how do you make a card without a base? All right. All right, so I've got almost all of my images stamped and matted. So that's good because then that'll make the rest of it will just be an assembly line and we won't care so much. So the last thing I did was I stamped one of the little leaves on the back. Um, so if you follow my blog, you'll know that I have two headings almost all the time. And one is, don't, don't forget the envelope, because I like to decorate the envelopes. I think it gives you just a, a great um, uh, finished feel. And then I've got the uh, Make the Inside Pretty header, which says, you know, if you're gonna spend all this time making a card, just do something on the inside too. And it's easier than you think because you really just take an element of something you used on the card and bring it into the inside, whether it's a piece of DSP, maybe a little ribbon, maybe a, as I just did another a stamp from the set. Um, and I decided because I wanted to leave room to write that I wouldn't do one of the big flowers that I would just do that sweet little ribbon. And of course there is no um, there is no uh, small flower. All right, so see, that's crooked. So it should be right here. And it's, it's crooked enough that I can't let it go. And so I have this stuff called undo, and you just put a little bit in that thing, and you just put your thing underneath there, and it lifts up the, 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 the adhesive really easily. And the best part about it, it dries clear. And so when it's dry, you won't know I've used it. Um, it's not good around blends though. So don't do this if you colored something with blends. But for stamped images, it works great. So it doesn't, it dries clear. So you're not gonna see that mess. And it's still stickier than sticky. So it doesn't even take the sticky away. It just breaks the bond a little bit. So let me see if I can get this a little bit better. There we go. That one, that one I couldn't let go, it was too bad. All right, so now I need my card base because I kind of want to get that together. And it is, Ten by six. 
so since I have to cut it, I'll bring my trimmer over. Now, there's two ways I could do this 10 by six, right? I can open the arm and cut it at 10, or I prefer to do the math and say, hey, it's an 11, it's 11 inch sheet of paper cut off an inch. And there your, there's your 10, okay, so. I do, I do that a lot. I don't like, I don't like using the, the markers up there because, um, again, because of my eye problem, I don't see those that well. And I, then I get a little bit off in my, in my different, um, in my different uh, cuttings. And it's six by 10. So then I'm gonna just put this over here at six. Now, the other thing I could do if I really wanted to go down here is I cut it off at 10 at two and a half, and that's the same thing, right? That's six inches, because it's eight and a half minus uh, six is two and a half, and so I can do that, and I didn't have to open my, my uh, arm up, okay? I, I might have to open it up soon. So this is my card base, all right? As we just learned, it's six by 10. Um, the card itself is five by six, and so I need to score it at, um, at five, Right, and I have to use this up, up the one up there, but you know, it's for this one, so I don't think it's gonna matter too much. All right, so now that's, now that's, that's done. And as you can see, I'm gonna assemble a lot before we even get to the interesting part, right? Because the, um, the interesting part is how that inside works but I really want to get this part done because um, oh, this is the one I have to cut another one for the box. We'll do that later. Um, I just like to have not so much stuff on my, my um, desk. When I do some, when I get to the point where something is tricky, I don't, I don't like having all that visual clutter. Um, I have a little ADHD and I get distracted really easy. Um, like really easy. And so I don't want to get distracted by the stuff on my desk thinking, oh, I still have to do that. And I still have to do this and I still have to do that. All right. And I did not dry fit this, so I hope it's the right size. There should be a 16th of an inch all the way around. And yes, it's the right size, so it's all good. All right, and then I should have a stamped image to go on top of that. Yeah, that's gonna look okay. I probably should have done Melon Mambo or Flirty Flamingo, but I like that one. What does it matter really, right? They're all colors in there and why not? The other thing I could have done it, but it wouldn't have looked as pretty, is I could have used white embossing powder and on the, you know, for the stamps. But the reason it wouldn't look as pretty is with the white, you wouldn't get this variation. All right, and so then I have another piece for the back. And I'm gonna do the same thing and make sure I get it the right size. Make sure this is really the back and make sure it's all lined up. A lot to think about here. All right, so now I'm gonna take this piece because this is where I'm gonna be able to write my message and I'm going to just attach it to the back. Okay. All right, so that was about right. Okay, so now I've got the card base ready. And um, now all I have to do is really the more complicated part, which is scoring and cutting. So the first part is easy, the first part of scoring. You take your smaller piece of DSP, this piece, the smaller piece, and you're just gonna score it at two, four, six, and yeah, two, four, and six. So I'm gonna score it at two, and you'll notice I like to use the down, the ones down here. 
then I need to score it at four. And now I would need to use my arm and to, to get it at six, but I can also say, okay, I'm gonna turn it around and do it at two. Okay, so these are gonna fold. Um, I always forget which way they're gonna fold in a sec. Yeah, valley, okay. So again, these are gonna fold valley, mountain, and then valley. All right, and I'm gonna use my bone folder because I want them creased and I wanna make sure that they line up nicely. Because I'll tell you, if they don't line up, line up nicely, this card doesn't work very well. And now I'm gonna get rid of one more set of um, stamped images because the stamped images just go on here and you sure wanna do this before you put the whole thing together. Because um, first of all, it, make, it stiffens the, the DSP a little bit and it just makes it easier to do everything you need to do once we get that one last piece ready. So as you can see so far, this card is really not very hard. Now it's important that you get this sort of and that's why I do this sometimes, is I wanna isolate that so I get it centered both, all ways. It's gotta be centered here, centered here, and centered here, because, and the, it's kind of a tight margin. The reason it's gotta be centered for these, uh, this way is that what keeps this in place is that this tucks into a, um, into a, a, a slit in this top part, right? And so if you've got it off a little bit, there's not enough room for it to, to tuck in. All right, and now I'm gonna do this one. And so with these busy patterns, I have trouble seeing where the score lines are. So that's why I tend to fold it a little bit. Um, it's hard to do the inner ones like that, but once I've got the outer one in place, it's, it's pretty easy. Okay, And also, I just need to get it far enough away from one score line because the top and bottom, I want to line up with that piece anyway. And since this is put on with uh, stamp and seal, if I get it wrong, I got it right. Um, if I get it wrong, it's really easy to, to fix. All right, so now I'm gonna put on my, um, another piece. Realize I'm doing this off camera, though I don't think you really wanna watch me roll the, the tape roller. And by now it gets a little easier to see where it goes. So again, just line it up and then I do a C and I, I shouldn't have said that. You'll notice I didn't nail it down. I didn't um, press it down because I think I knew in my heart that it wasn't right. Actually, this isn't right. I might have to fix that later. It's a little crooked. Okay. Yeah, that whole thing is crooked, but I'll fix. I'll fix it after it's together. Not a big deal. You don't have to watch me because my eyes are bad. All right, so let's get back to gluing this on. Again, you want it to be straight and centered. And I gotta fix that now because it's just bugging me. Both of them are crooked and that just makes the whole card look, look uh, yucky. All right, so I'm gonna first get this up. Isn't that magic? And then because this has adhesive on the back and it's really, really sticky, I'm going to lay it on my silicone mat because you know it won't stick. And then I'm gonna do this. Now, the only bad thing about this undo stuff is obviously it has some chemical in it, right? That lets this happen. And so you don't wanna overuse it because you, know, you can't buy it in California because they think it causes cancer and it probably does in a big enough quantity. Um, but I figured in my, one of my previous careers, which was a chemist, um, I got all kinds of really bad, <laughs> exposed to really bad chemicals, so I'm not as worried as I should be about this one. 
I mean, I used to have to run tests to detect how much cyanide was in some water, and um, I had to run tests that where we used, oops, too big, um, where we used uh, um, hydrofluoric acid, which burns through your bones if it touches you. So, you know, like, I think this is just probably not something to worry too much about. Anyway, um, of course, there I was gloved, and I had on a mask and a face shield, and I was in a, a ventilated room and, you know, not my, not my craft room here. Okay, so that piece is now finished. And now my cans are sticky from that darn, um, from the stickiness of this. All right, so what's, what's next? All right, so I saved the hard part for last. Now, some people would have started with the hard part, but I feel better starting with it last because now, I've got all of my stuff kind of out of the way. I've only got a few pieces left to put together. And uh, so there's less clutter on my desk. All right, so first we have to score, again, at two inches, four inches, every two inches, right? I guess is the best way to put it. Oh, let me just double check that because what if I'm wrong? <laughs> Yeah, two, four, six, and eight. So I'm gonna score it two. All right, and this part always makes me nervous because um, I've been known to use the wrong blade. And now I'm gonna go down to four. I don't know if you can see that here. Let me get this out of the way and let me put this in on camera. All right, so next I'm gonna do four. Now with DSP, you want to make sure you don't um, you don't score too hard because you don't want to, um, it to to break, right? You want it to be nice and easy. All right, so another two, another four, and then. Yeah, I gotta do one more because I still have a big piece here. And you can't see those score lines. I can barely see those score lines. So I also have to score as six. So I have to go up to the top to do that. All right, so basically I've scored every two inches. You know, two, four, six, eight, 10, and 12, okay? All right, so now we have our piece scored. And now comes the trickier part because we have to have, we have to, um, we have to do some cutting. So before I start the cutting, um, we, what we have to do is we have, we're going to cut a window into this piece, right? So I think if you look at this card, you can see that. We've cut a window into this piece that these pieces fit into. So the first thing we're gonna do is cut that window, and then we're gonna cut these little slits. And I know when I first saw like the directions, all they had was the cutting marks, and I was so darn confused, like, huh? But once I realized, oh, we're cutting a window, okay, I got that. Now to cut the window, I want to make sure I get this dimension right. It's actually pretty easy. I think it's one and a half, right? Yep. So you put your piece the, the long way at one and a half, right? So down the right side, I have one and a half. And I cut from the first score line to the last score line, okay? So that means I'm going to find my score line at 10 inches. If I, if I scored this right, it's at 10 inches. It doesn't look like it's at 10 inches. Let's, oh, that's because this ruler doesn't work right. So I want this at one and a half, and I'm not sure if you can see this, but what's really nice is if it butts up the edge of the paper trimmer, 
you're at one and a half inches. I mean, you're at one and a half inches, yeah. So anyway, I want to score from uh, two inches to 10 inches, or as I think of it, the first score line to the second score line. Unfortunately, I have to get my head up here so I can actually see that. except it wasn't supposed to be a score, it was supposed to be a cut. So let's try that again, because <laughs> I got it scored right. All right, so we wanna be at two inches, or the first score line, to 10 inches, or the second score line. Okay, and then we just wanna flip it and do it, do it again. Now, if you didn't hit the score lines exactly, that's okay because you can always trim it with a scissor. But if you go past the score line, that's a little bit not good because then you've got a weakness there. But if it's on the edges, it doesn't matter so much because those get glued down solid so nobody sees it. All right, so once again, I'm doing it at butted up right against this. And then I'm gonna try that two inches again. Hopefully I do a better job this time. Okay. All right, now you can see I've got two score lines, two cuts. All right, so now all I'm gonna do is, a, like I could measure this, but I don't really need to because I'm, I know what that is. I gotta make a window there. So I'm just gonna line it up in my tr with my track with each of these lines, and I'm just gonna cut from those two lines. And yes, I will give you dimensions for those of you who wanna be you know, like want to know the dimensions, but I don't really need to know them because I just have to make that window. And I like, again, like to work on this, you know, like right here. So hopefully you're seeing that. And when I'm done, this window should come out. Now these don't match up. So that means I cut one too far. So what, and it's this one. So what I'm gonna do here is I'm going to line that one up and just cut on that, that score line. Okay, so I'm gonna make sure that that's right on, right in my scoring track. Come down to there. And then this should just pop out. This is just a piece of DSP now that we're not using, but I kept it because I mean, these would make really cute panels on a different card. So we have that. All right. So now the next trick is, let's see if I can get this done without too much trouble. The next trick is we've got to put in the middle of each of these, we've got to put a, a, a mark. And so, is that really two inches? It's not. Let's hope I've got this right because I don't have another piece of this DSP. Those are right. Those are right. All right, so this, this is wrong. So I didn't get this right. Let's see, is this two inches? No, this is two inches. Oops, sorry about this. I did not score these right. So I'm gonna have to do some fixing, I think. So if I fold it in half, and then I fold it in half again on the score lines, they should, it should line up really, really nicely. And so I'm gonna do that before we make any more cuts, because I wanna get, if I don't get those cuts right, it'll, it'll really not come out very well. Um, okay, so that looks good, and this one has to get cut a little because it's got to turn in. 
That looks good. So then it looks like I just have to trim this piece just so that they're the same. So let me, um, I'm not gonna do it with, I'll do it with my paper trimmer because if I do it with scissors, I will go crooked. With the stupid shaky hands. All right. So I want it to go, where's the score line? Right on that score line. So from here, make that straight. Hang on. Wouldn't you know it? Here I am trying to do this live, and my trimmer is falling apart here. Sometimes the blade pops up. Do you ever have that problem where the blade just pops up? So let's see. I want to go from. this piece, but I got to get the blade up there before I start cutting it. So there we go. All right. Hopefully this is enough. I might do a second one for my friend because this is starting to come be a little bit, as I would put it, schlocky. All right. So that's even. This is even. These are even and it should fold nicely. All right. Okay, so the last step is to measure, I always measure this one because um, I got off track last time by not measuring it. So I want it to be the first cut to be at three at three inches. So I put this at three inches and then I just cut an inch and a, in, in a half an inch. All right, now I'm gonna eyeball it, but it's not hard to, well, I guess I could just look at the ruler um, because this is an inch and a half, so I want about a third of it. And then I wanna come down and do a third of it. All right, and then I wanna go to five inches which means I gotta go back up to the top because I can't do five inches there. And I wanna do, do the same. So I'm gonna go up to five inches and I'm gonna do, let's see, from here to about there and then from here to about there. And then, because I don't wanna get the arm out, I'm going to flip it and I'm just going to do it again on the last two pieces. I flip it, flipped it the wrong way. So I want this at three and cut from about a half inch there and a half inch there. And then I'm gonna go up to five and I'm gonna do a half inch there and a half inch there. Okay, so now I've got all these little hole, these little cuts. So now we're almost done with this card. So the first step is to take your card base which we've already got done. And we're going to glue the two end pieces onto the end onto the card. So these two pieces that are at the end, you just, we're gonna put them on the card. And uh, I'm gonna use um, a little bit of uh, stamp and seal. This stuff holds well enough that you don't need to use tear and tape or even glue. You can just use this. Um, I, you know, I used to like snail, but I like this way better, even if it's hard to get out of the thing sometimes, because it, um, it really, really holds. Now, you also want to make sure you get the orientation right. Don't ask me how I know that, right? Because you want to make sure that the flowers are going up instead of down. And then this should fit snugly, right? Like there's no margin on this one. There shouldn't be anyway. And this one, it's important to get it right because 
if you don't, then the whole inside thing won't work. And I didn't get it right. So I'm gonna have to put that down to do it. And hopefully I won't wreck the paper as I'm pulling this up. Otherwise I'll get my fabulous undo out. And let's see, how does that line up here? Now you'll notice that it, it's longer than the card. I mean, than the card base. And that's important, right? Because you've got to get it, um, you've got to get it to, uh, to, to fold when it's flat. If you don't do that, then, you know, it's just not, it, the mechanism isn't going to work. So at first I was a little puzzled. That's why I'm doing a visit video, because I just read directions and couldn't figure it out. And then I thought, oh, I must be doing something wrong. And I, wa I wasn't. I just didn't think about how this piece had to go together. So you're putting some, some snail on, or some stampin' seal on it, and then you're going to just put it across here and make sure that it lines up nicely. It's nice and square. And then we're going to make sure it folds the way we think it should, right? So mountain valley, mountain valley, mountain valley, mountain valley. And why is it not folding here? There we go. Looks like I've got some measurement wrong or something because it should be just closing up nicely. Oh, I see it. Okay, there we go. There we go. Come on. All right, that was a bit fid more fiddly than I wanted, but it's closed. Okay. All right, and then when you pop it open, it pops open. And once you get it closed, it you know, it's fine. It's just getting it closed. So here is literally the hardest part of this card. And that is, you've got to fit these into those slits we cut. And the problem is, they pop out as you're putting them in, right? And those slits, you need to put it in so the slit is centered on the... Um, the top of of this right so you you know you don't want to you don't want it to to go off too much or it won't work for the next slit and so then and see it just did what i said it would it popped out and i tried all kinds of ways of doing this like do the top first and then the bottom and then that didn't work and so then i tried doing it like this and this works it's just a little fiddly while you're doing it, it takes just a little bit of time to get it right and uh, once you get it right, though, it just pops beautifully. There we go. All right, I got one and a half in. That's pretty good for right now. All right, so I got to get this one in. All right, two in. And then you can adjust them. Once you've got this all assembled, you can adjust them, right? Like, I, you know, I said it's important to get it the right in, right in the center, but you can do that. You do that adjustment after you get them all put, you get it all put together. All right, so let's see if I can get this last one in and then go back and fix the, the ones that are broken. And no such luck, because I broke all of them trying to get this one in. All right, so let's try this one again. I'm trying to do it on a video so that of course makes it harder just you know it just makes it harder all right and then let's see if I can get this one in Now, 
ones, right? So let's get this one in. Okay, I kind of have it. It's not perfect, and I'm going to fuddle fiddle with it, you know, when I'm not if, when I'm not doing the video. But um, basically, this is what you need. And then you make sure that the folds are right so that they, um, they, they go with the fold so that it, it, um, the card can fold. But that's about it. So that's pretty simple. Look at that. All right, now the last thing I wanted to do and to be done with the card is I wanted to put some rhinestones on it. I wanted to put some bling on it. And unfortunately, that the bling I like, the bling that was out there wasn't something, um, there wasn't anything that I liked. There were some with these colors, but it was either too shiny because this, this is sort of softer, I think. Um, and it was too shiny, I didn't like it. So what I'm gonna do for this piece is, new piece, new package, so I had to unwrap them. Um, I am going to color three of the littler ones. Now, um, or no, the medium ones. I, when I'm gonna color embellishments, I always use the blunt end, the skinny end of my, uh, my um, blends. If you use the brush end, you'll, bu you'll blow the brush end. And so I always use this tip because it's firmer and you don't, you, don't, you have to have a really light ha hand to do it with the other ones. And I don't have a really light hand. So I actually just use this end and it works perfectly. I wanna make sure I get all around the edges. I love that we can color things to make them match our projects. And then I am just gonna put these around the, the sentiment, which of course is gonna be really hard to show you and I'll probably pop it out while I'm doing it. So let's just do that and just be done with it. I should have put these on before for. I always have a hard time figuring that out because if I put them on before, I might knock them off while I'm assembling. But if I put them on after, then it, I risk throwing, getting it, you know, not to, not to fold or to disassemble it. All right, so I'm just gonna stick this back in here because what I really wanna do is show you the box next, okay? Um, and that's because I want, so people tend to shy away from boxes because they're hard. And once you see the trick, they're not hard at all. All right, so front and top. Those aren't the right, this is the one. One's the top, one's the bottom. How do I know? The top is always bigger than the bottom by 1 16th of an inch. So all I have to do is match them up on both sides or even on just one side. And I can see that this one is bigger. Right, so it's so easy to, it's pretty easy to do this. I know my card is five by six, so the basic part of the box has to be five by six. And I know that um, I want a double walled box. What I mean by that is, so that you, this is, this, this folds in on itself because it just gives it a more finished look. And then I want a, um, What was I going to say? Oh, and then I want that double walled, and I want it to be three quarters of an inch. So that's an adding a half a half an inch to each side, which is three. So I know that you know it's five plus three by six plus three. Um, and then I give it a little bit more. Why? Because I need the card to fit in here. So if I just go went five plus three, that would be eight inches, but that this card, um, no, five plus three is eight, but the card is five, and so it wouldn't quite fit. So I want eight and a quarter, okay, which I've already done. And then the the next piece is, this is the base, so I'm gonna, it doesn't really matter. Once you've got that, nothing else matters. I am just gonna score this at three quarters of an inch. then a half an inch 
all the way around. So three quarters by a half. And this is the part that's a little bit fiddly to, to watch, right? I mean, a little boring because I'm just gonna, I'm gonna do this and then I'm gonna do a bunch of cutting. So we may not do this whole box. Um, we'll see. Because once you see the bottom, the top is just the same. It's an identical uh, thing, except as I said, it's a 16th of an inch bigger. do all the sides and I did all the sides and I don't know if you can see but there's score marks okay now eventually we have to fold this so that we can see we have to fold this so that um, it, it stays together nicely but I find it easier to cut if I don't score it first but let me see if I can get this so that you can see them each corner has four squares from the intersection of the line. So there's one square here, one square here, one square here, one square here. And I am going to cut out the bottom of those squares, those bottom two squares. Now, everybody's got their own way of doing this, but I like to do the same operation on all four sides and then move on to the next thing. Because for me, that makes sure I don't make a mistake because I'm only doing one thing. Except I just made that mistake there. No, I didn't, it's right here, okay. So I'm just cutting out those two, four, those four, um, those four squares. So they're the two outer squares. And then I cut out the wrong two over here, I think. Yep. It doesn't matter because you're also going to cut out one of the other ones. So that's fine. So you're going to cut out the two squares along one side. And then you're going to cut off the bottom square. So that when you're done, you're going to cut out that bottom square or a side square if you've already cut out the bottom square. Um, and now I just need to cut this. And so my box now looks like this. And it doesn't matter of what the dimensions, oops, missed one. Um, it doesn't matter what the dimensions are of the box. It's always the same. It's always like this if you're gonna do double wall sides. That's how it looks, right? So pretty easy. Now we have to deal with this square. And so I have to figure out where I want my tabs to go because I like my tabs to go to the same. If I'm doing that one side, the top and the bottom or left and right, I want it to be the same. So these are my tabs. And so I'm gonna cut up to the next score line along here. Can everybody see that? I cut up to the next score line on the opposite sides. If you do it on all sides, of course, you're gonna cut it off and that would be bad because you wouldn't have it to when you need to glue, okay? All right, okay, so now I could fold this and put it together, but I'm not going to, why? Because it gets too bulky if I do that. So what I need to do on all of these tabs is I need to just cut off a little sliver and I need to do that on all four sides on all the tabs. So I'm just cutting up here. This one I cut a little too much, but you can see it better. I'm just cutting up from a little ways on this side to the score line. And so I'm going to do it again here. I'm going to cut over a little ways here to the score line. And that notches it a little bit. And that makes it really easy then to put together. And why? Because those, that's, that, is, that gets away a little of the bulk where the pieces meet. And so you get nice, crisp joints. We'll see how I do 
when I'm doing this in front of you guys, but okay, so here we go. And then here we go. And then here we go. And then here we go. Here we go. One more. We got a couple more to go. This part is to me the the hardest not the hardest but the most tedious because you gotta do three cuts per side and that makes it a little bit long. I think this is my last one though. Nope, I got one more right here. Right here. Alright, let's get this stuff out of the way. Alright, so now I've got a box that looks like this. And I'm gonna, all right, so I'm double checking to make sure I managed to get all four sides with the little notch taken out. And then I'm gonna start folding and I'm gonna fold. And this one you really wanna use your bone folder on because you need those to be really crisp, right? They need to be really um, down there to get nice edges on your box. So we're gonna go around like this. I'm gonna go around like this. And we're gonna go, oops, I didn't get that one. I didn't get this one. Now it's time to just assemble it. And what, what I'm gonna do is, I'm gonna use some liquid glue on the tabs on this part. I'm using liquid glue, not for the holding strength, but for what I call wiggle room, because I've gotta get that lined up really well or the whole box looks bad and doesn't stay together. And if you can see what I mean by really well, this was a bad color to use because it's so dark. But this has to match this. This score line has to match this score line. And so the liquid glue lets me do that really easily. And now you can see, see how these two don't touch? That's what gives me a better inside finish. And so I'm gonna work my way around with the liquid glue. And if you think about it, I'm really putting the glue on the top, on the, you know, the outside of the box, right? Because that tab is folding in. And sometimes you have to handle it a little bit, let it dry. I, um, I tend to uh, use, if I'm not, if I'm really being impatient, I have some clothespins hanging around and I just use <laughs> clothespins to hold it closed. Um, okay, so a little bit of liquid glue. And yeah, I am a Stampin' Up! demonstrator, but um, I don't, I can't use Tom that, that green liquid glue because it's too, it dries sticky and my hands end up, I'm very clumsy because of that eye thing and it, my hands end up being all sticky. All right, and now this one's a little bit tougher because of course it's the last one and it doesn't look like I folded it well either. So that makes it even tr trickier. But anyway, I'm gonna get a little bit of glue on that. And then I'm gonna um, put that together. And if I did it right, these all will line up really nicely. And they do, well, as nicely as I can make them. All right, so now we're done with the glue. By the way, I use this art glitter glue stuff and I love it. And the reason I love it is that it dries, it dries so you, the same color, you know, it dries clear and it's not shiny, it dries matte. The only bad thing about it is you can only get it shipped in, in, to colder climes in the summer. It separates in the winter if you have it outside. So the, the company that makes it, um, 
got a little thing here um, that makes it won't let it be shipped in the winter to northern climes. Okay, so now I have to fold these in, right? This part in. Right, you can see the score line there, and you can see. So I'm just gonna put some snail on this, not snail, uh, fast, uh, stamp and seal. We've, sorry, we've had, we had snail forever. Um, all right, and I'm just running a, a line of it down there. It, we don't need a tear and tape to keep this together for a couple reasons. One, it's just gonna hold a card, so it's not like it has to be heavy duty. But this stuff really, really seals well. All right, and then I'm gonna put another runner of it down here. You could also use liquid glue if you want. I've been known to do that. Um, because I do like my liquid glue. Again, wiggle room. If I'm doing something where I gotta get it, it's gotta be perfect and I need some wiggle room, it's glue. All right, and see, I didn't get that cut enough and see how it's, how it's bowing there. So I'm not sure which one wasn't cut enough, this one probably, at all. And see how much nicer that is now, right? So glad I made that mistake because um, they, they, you know, when you're trying to fold them in, they just get out of whack um, a little bit. Okay. So then next is this one. And that's done. And then I like to take my bone folder and just make sure that's pressed down really well. If it were glue, you'd have to do that to make sure it's spread the way you wanted it to. But here you just have to do this. All right, so that's our bottom. Does our card fit? Yes, it does. Okay, so I think we're gonna hold off. I'm not gonna make the top um, with, with you because um, it's the same as the bottom. And then when you're done, you put on a piece of DSP and you put on your, your flower. And so it matches the front of your card. And uh, that's all there is to it. So I hope you enjoyed watching me make this card. Um, I think it's kind of fun. I have some ideas for Christmas card, a Christmas card with this, um, because the thing I like about it is it really shows off the beautiful DSP. And um, I think my next one, I will use opposite sides of like this. Like I'm thinking about a candy cane one with the uh, new sweetest, uh, sweetest, Christmas uh, uh, bundle and putting candy canes on here and a Christmas greeting. Now, these will go to special people. I wouldn't make those for everybody because this is a little bit of work. But, you know, again, the people that like it, you like to use my cards as decoration will probably get one. Um, the other thing I'm going to, I would do on, the, on this piece <clears throat> for the front of the box is I would put some um, embellishments on it like I did here, right? So I would put some bling on this piece. And then, I don't know why I didn't do bling. Oh, that's the, um, I probably should have done the bling on this piece too. But you get the idea. Um, so anyway, um, thanks for watching. I hope you enjoy this month's tutorial. Um, there are there are lots of, lots of talented ladies. We get together every month and put together a tutorial. And uh, you get the tutorial with a $50 purchase. And it usually has a lot of really, really great ideas in it. So um, $50 purchase in my online store at stampwithcandy.com. So thank you and have a good rest of your day.